Hi there friends, this is Chris with Peace of Mind Art and Crafts and today I'm here to show you a little project that I've been working on um, to replenish some of the ornaments I have up at the uh, Foothills Art Show in uh, in Golden, Colorado and I took a bunch of these little angels up there and they have been selling pretty well so I decided I would make some more. So I thought I'd take you on that journey with me as far as how I make them. Um, now I did get this idea from someone or something off, off the internet. Um, what I usually do is I, if I have an idea of how I want to do something, is I oftentimes will look on the internet to see if I can find something that's similar to what kind of idea I had. And, um... So I, I looked up Paper Angels, and I found a, just a whole bunch of them, different ones. So what I usually end up doing is I combine different ideas that I find. So I can't really say who I got this idea from because it's kind of a, a combination of different ideas that I got from different people. So if you recognize this as something that you developed... Um, Thank you very much for for putting it on uh, on YouTube so that I could see it, and um, I appreciate all of you people who come up with all these different ideas for us. Um, some ideas I do completely from scratch, and you know, so that I can call them mine. But most most of the time, not most of the time, you get ideas from you know, like I said, a collection of different ideas that you combine into your own project. So that's what we're doing here. And you also can uh, plan it that way. As far as the way that you're going to do it, you can um, uh, have different different elements in these. I'm just going to show you the very basics for making these. And uh, so we'll go through that. Excuse me. And if you have any comments or if you have seen another um, way of doing this that uh, if you could link it that would be great or if you could just tell about it down below in the comments that would be great as well so um, let's get started first of all these are a, a paper angel and they're made out of music sheets that that we get um, most of the ones that I get are already have this beautiful aging to them because they're of course older uh, music that it was printed like in the 20s and 30s and so on that I get at antique shops <clears throat> so I'll show you how to make these I'm going to put these aside for now Maybe I'll leave this little one up here in the up in the corner so we can we can see it as we go. Okay, so I started out when I first started doing this, I decided how big I wanted my angels. I did find these beads at the dollar store. And I looked other places as well because I was looking for a bead that was a little bit larger than this. I did find some some other ones at the dollar store that were quite a bit larger than these that were not uh, that were too big. So I decided, well, I'll use I'll use this. It's a little bit small for this this size angel, but it it works okay for me. I don't I don't have too much of a problem with it. Also, I got these this color. It's like a pearl because I like the way the pearl looked. Then I got to thinking, well, you know. Um, what about a person of color if they want to get one to, more of their skin tone? So what I did was I painted some. I painted some beads with um, with acrylic, and they seem to turn out okay. Um, so I've used those in in some of them as well. So you can do whatever whatever suits you as far as the color of the bead. Uh, these would look cute too with uh, with wooden beads. And then, if you're if you're uh, very dexterous, you could paint a little face on them. They do need to be a bead for this situation that I'm showing you. 
In other words, they need to have a hole in the middle. So the way we start out is let's get the paper first. I cut a rectangle and the size for the rectangle is that I used is four by five and a half. And if you want a smaller angel or a bigger angel, you can experiment with that combination and see, you know, how it maybe extend it by two inches, maybe six by uh, seven and a half. You know, if you want a bigger one or a smaller one would be three by four and a half. You know, something like that. Just play around with your dimensions on, on that. So I cut out of the music paper. I used this as a pattern and I put it down on the music paper. Now these are going to be folded on the long side. And that's very, that's very important. And you will need two for each angel. Okay? Two for each angel. This is how they will look when they're folded. They're folded concertina style or like you're making a fan. Remember when you, when you were a kid you used to make the fans? Fan out like that. So what you're going to do is you're going to uh, fold two of them and I'll show you a quick, quick way I fold. I take it Excuse me, remember, we're folding on the long side. So I put the two long sides together. And this paper is fairly thin, so I don't need to score it too much. If it was a little bit heavier, which it could be a little bit heavier, but you don't want to go too heavy on these. Because then you won't, you won't get the crisp folds for the angel. Okay, then what I do is I then again fold it in half. Now this is just to get my lines. I'm not really doing it in the, the concertina way yet. This is just to get my lines. And then I'll open it up and I'll fold this in to the center line. Like so. I'll turn it around. I'll fold this one into the center line. Like so. Okay, so now I have all my folds in there. They're not really going the right way yet. So what I'll do is I'll start in the end and then I'll continue to flip it over. I've already got my fold lines on there so it's really easy for me just to follow along with those. And if you need to use a bone folder you can do that to make the fold. I just use my hands and sometimes my fingernails. Which along the sides. Remember just keep turning it over. Turning it over until you get to the end. Okay, then you have your, your, your folded shape. And I'll show you one more time on that. This is to get my folds right. I fold it in half the long way. If you want to so position whatever music is on here to go this way across, then you can do that as well. But I find it, I like the... Um, the way it looks in this in this uh, direction. So fold in half, fold up in half again so that you're getting force. Okay, and then fold, unfold it, then fold to the middle on this one, turn it around, fold to the middle on this side. Okay, so basically you have this folded into, basically into eight folds. So you want to start at one end, and you want to fold that one up. Turn it over, fold the next one, turn it over, the next one. You already have your fold lines. Just keep turning it over and folding it. This makes it very easy. Having scored it first, it makes it very easy to um, to get everything even. And and that's that's kind of what you want is to get everything even. Okay. <clears throat> now I take my four by five and a half inch piece and I'll put the two together. Okay. 
and I'll arrange them according to how I want them. Sometimes it turns out that there's a line across here. These came from the same sheet of music. So you can turn them around until you find something that's more pleasing. Maybe, okay, now on this one, this outside part, I wouldn't want that on the front. I would want something that, that, that pretty much that would show. And same for here. This could go on the inside. Okay, so what I do then is I take two of them and I have it facing up the way that I want it to face. And you can determine that later too when you when you open it up after you get this put together. You can determine determine that as well. Okay, so you're going to put these two together like this. Then down from the top, this is what makes the wings. It's like a Y. See it here on my diagram. And you want to you want to fold one and three fourths inch down. And I made myself a little template on this side from the edge here to here is one and three fourths inch. So I'm just gonna I can put this down and I'm just gonna measure kind of with my fingers and I'm gonna bend that over. Okay. So that's where my wings are. Okay, then I'm gonna take this side and that's gonna have to go over the other way, but I've already got my kind of my bend in there. So I'm gonna bend it that way. Okay, so now we've got the body of, of the angel. Now if you want your wings to be a little bit bigger and the, the bottom part not to be quite so big, you can make you can do that, you can adjust that. Okay, so I'm going to put that aside for the moment while I make the head. Okay, and I'm going to take a 10 inch string that I've cut, whatever string you want to use for the top, this is the top, or the hanger, and I'll show you also how you can add things to this, this top part as well. If you want to, you take your bead. Uh, let's make one of, one of these that I just painted. I'll try one of those. Okay, and a 10 inch piece of string. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert one in one end into the string, into the bead. Okay, and you notice it went through there fairly fairly easily. Don't try to do both of them at the same time because I have found that it's too thick for that. It doesn't work. But if you do one at a time, it works a lot better. So I put this, this part of the string in there next. See, and that will come right out the bottom. And I'll pull that to meet this one. Okay. Now... This, I want to leave probably at least that much down on the bottom. Be careful not to let go of really either one of these sides because your bead will slide off more easily if you do that. So, oh, I want to make my knot about right there. So, what is that? That's about, it's about an inch and a half or so, but I'll probably need at least that much. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick it down in here to catch it in there. So I want to try to make a knot there. Okay, so just do the best you can. If it turns out a little longer or a little shorter, that's all right. It's not a, it's not a really big deal. Just so you have enough to glue to glue it in there, and so that it's not too long that it takes up this top part because you want this top part to be fairly long too so you can hang it use it as an ornament okay so now you've got your bead and pull your bead down to the to where this knot is and the knot's fairly thick so that it's not going to slide around and I want to make another knot on the top of the bead 
that's a little tricky too so you just kind of have to maneuver it around I try to get as close to the bead as possible to make the knot put this through okay now when you when you're pulling it through you're gonna want to try to get that try to get that knot as close as possible to the bead and scrunch it down so there's not there's not very much distance between the the uh, the knots so you have a knot here, let me show you closer up so you have a knot at the top of the the head and at the bottom of the head okay so now you can glue let's glue this this head to the angel now this is a bit tricky so I'm going to show you I'm going to get some of my clips here that I use and I use the art glitter glue for this you can also use the three-in-one glue, um, it, which if it's if you're if it's if you're having trouble with it, then use a three-in-one because it it holds a little better. But because the glitter glue dries so fast, I prefer it. So use it, whichever one works for you. And our glitter glue, you can also substitute any craft glue that you have, like a thick maybe a thicker craft glue. Okay, so what I do is I take the the inside and I'm going to put a bead of glue all the way down. You don't need a whole lot. You might put more at the top because that's where it secures the, the string. And then on the other side, you only need to put it on the top part where the string is going to go. Okay, so you have that going on. Now what you need to do is put your bead in on the side that has the glue going all the way down and center it. And then you're going to match up this side. Now try to get that, that knot almost all the way down in there. A knot that's on the bottom that that's where the neck is try to get that all the way down there and you can also try to work at getting this even on the bottom although mine isn't I'll show you what to, what you can do in a minute okay then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to it's glued fairly fairly tightly there I'm going to put a little clip here at the bottom that'll just help that adhere there and I'm going to turn it so that I can put I like my wings the wings of the angel my, I don't have any wings it's not yet. Um, I like the wings of the angel to to adhere to the sides here. I think it it looks better, and you can kind of maneuver maneuver them up that way. So what I do is I put I just put a little dot on this side, a dot of glue, and a little dot of glue on this side. And since it's paper, it's going to hold just fine. And you just want to hold that one that one edge. So, okay, and I'm going to put on here and on here. Okay, so I'm going to take this bottom one off because that's probably already pretty well adhered. And I'm going to give it a second, give it a minute to, to dry here. I'm going to get out my other um, things that I need. Now I want to decide what kind of a uh, scarf or bow or ribbon I want to put around. And uh, let's see, I had picked out this pretty Christmas ribbon that I have that has like 
like holly leaves and a scroll design. So we're going to get that ready. Okay, see how this is going down and it's it's just fine. I like it. Okay, and before I put this the ribbon around the neck, what I'm going to do is, <clears throat> if the bead's a little bit wobbly, what you can do is you can put a bit of glue on the neck before you put your scarf around and that will help adhere it, adhere it down. Okay, and on this one, let's see, I, I think I'm gonna, this, I'm sorry, I was out of camera view. And I'm gonna tie it like that. And that knot helps helps it sit down further, helps the head sit down further. And and it will when it when it's dry. And you can have this come down as a as a scarf or a ribbon. And what I usually do is I'll is I'll wait to cut this off. I can put a, just a tiny bit of glue here to adhere it down. to the side. And right on that fold there is where I kind of want it. And I might need to, to hold it down there for a minute. Get rid of these clips out of the way. Okay. If you want to make a scarf, what you do for the scarf is as I cut a piece of an old uh, wool shirt, or you could use flannel as well. And then I, I wrapped it around the neck, made a knot, and then I cut a little fringe on the bottom here. I don't know if you can see that. And then I also glued this to the, to the angel, to the angel's dress. Now this you can leave loose, which I think I might. Um, now that head's not near as wobbly as it was. Because I, I adhered it down. And you can also, you could also put a little more glue up here. And you'd have to hold that in place there until it, until it catches. Why don't I put it down there? I'll put one of these underneath it so it kind of holds it up a bit against the glue. No. And then I can clip the sides of the ribbon off. Make it as long or short as I want. So then what I usually do is I turn it over and you can usually see some of this, uh, the ribbon and, and so on on the back. So in order to clean it up a bit, what I do is I take, I have these uh, plastic snowflakes if I can find it. Okay, I found my paused it there and I found my plastic snowflake and here it is it's like a sequin and if I place that just right over there on the back then that will cover up that area where the where the wings and the, the dress fold so I'm just gonna do that and that this is a place also where the um, three in one or the fabric tank might work a little better, but I find if I just place it and then kind of leave it alone that it that it works fine. So I'm going to move that one. I'm going to move that one over to dry, and I'm going to 
bring this one out. You'll see how I how I did put a little glitter on what I used was let me show you. What I used was this tulip dazzling glitter. And basically what it is 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 it's a um is it's a glue with tiny little glitter in it and it just gives it a little sparkle it doesn't it doesn't do too much and I just kind of rub it take a brush and just kind of brush it on here and there and it just gives a little sparkle to it so that's something you can add if you like that I'll turn this one over so you can see the how that how that uh, snowflake covers now you could use anything back here but I would recommend something flat but even if you had like a bow or something like that, that would be fine. Or basically anything you want. Poinsettia, if you have one that's that small enough. Okay, so now let's let's try to get um let's try to get some some topping to this to this angel. Okay, so what I did on what I do on mine is I printed out these these little tags that says that say every time a bell rings an angel gets its wings. Okay? So I I kind of liked that saying. You could um if you wanted to and I'll bring it over here. You could go around it with some um some inking. Just to give it a little more character, a little tag. Okay, and then since it says every time a bell rings, I found these bells. Found two different kinds of bells. Like a, I found these bells first, and I liked them a lot. But then I couldn't find them anymore when I went looking for some more. So I got these bells, which work just as well. And these even have a have a little sound to them. So either way, let's let's do one. Let's do this this bell. Okay. And then long ago, I bought these at the uh, I shop at the end of the uh, at the sales at the craft stores after Christmas is over, like usually around in January or middle part of January or beginning part of January. Anymore, they have sales like right afterwards. They mark everything down to like 75% off or 90% off. So, and that works out for me. So, what I did was one time I bought these hangers, ornament hangers, for like really cheap. I mean, I can't even remember. I paid like 25 cents a package for, for a whole bunch of them. So, I have had them like for six or eight years and I just never found the right thing for them but they worked for this project I don't have I do have a fairly big stash of stuff but I don't have that much stuff that I that I keep <clears throat> so I put that over there and then I gotta put the bell on this one has a little place for me to I don't wish you could see this closer but you can also bend this just a bit if you have to. Okay, and then there's your little bell. Okay, so that's your little ornament hanger. So then you just have to put the angel on there. Which she slides on there pretty well. So, there you go. Every time a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. Okay. So, here's our other little angel. She's, she's glued down now, so her head isn't wobbling quite so much. There we go. I'm really so glad you could join me today. I hope you're working on some some Christmas projects or even just some general projects. Um, especially this time of year, people uh, people like to get 
handmade things, especially if you're just giving, you know, a little something to someone, an ornament or a card, a handmade card or whatever. If it's handmade, it means so much more to them, I think. And especially if it's beautiful and handmade, which these angels are. Thanks for joining me today. I'm still up at the Foothills Art Center in Golden with the, uh, it's called the Holiday Art Market. And if you're in the, in the uh, Golden, Colorado area, it's right near Denver, please stop up and see, see my, uh, my uh, work up there. And also some other very, very wonderful artists are up there. I wish you all peace of mind. Bye for now.